And our big one tonight, former chairman of Ghana's Electoral Commission, Dr. Kwejo Afarijan, has downplayed the over-reliance on technology by election management bodies to guarantee credible elections. At a workshop in Accra, he noted there is the need for election management bodies to do thorough consultations before introducing new technology. There has been a remarkable increase in the deployment of digital technologies in elections over the last two decades. In Africa, roughly half of all national level elections now involve digital equipment of some form, most notably biometric voter registration and electronic results transmission. While the resources and capacity of the state are limited, some have argued that such technologies make it possible to rapidly leapfrog to cleaner and more credible elections. However, former chairman of Ghana's Electoral Commission, Dr. Kojoa Farijan, said an election management body should not rush to introduce technology. But you may have the best election technology available and still not be able to deliver a credible election. This underscores the singular importance of the human factor in elections. Dr. Farijan says beyond technology, an election management body has a responsibility to put its house in order. At minimum, it must build checks into the electoral process such that general mistakes and deliberate, deliberate wrongdoing can be detected. It must also train all categories of election workers will to be able to deliver services in a transparent and efficient manner. He said election observation is not a fault-finding one, but a fact-finding activity. The workshop by the West African Election Observers Network was to discuss issues that border on the advancement of electoral integrity in the West African sub-region. Let's get on to the telephone lines now and speak with a political analyst, uh, political scientist, uh, Dr. Osu Mensah. Uh, good evening, Doc, and thank you very much. I know I spoke to you in the afternoon on radio, and one of the things we were uh, seeking to figure out is whether in our journey, in our democratic journey, you get the sense that we have been able to uh, use technology fairly well and effectively to impact positively on our uh, election outcomes. Thank you very much. I think that I think that so far from 1992 up to 2015, we have been able to, if we want, control and also colonize the use of digital technology to improve the process of conducting elections from one election to another mm. election. I must say that the technology is not certainly a fair process at the end of the day, but it is only an aid that will add up to ensure that. The person casting the vote, you know that that is the real voter casting the vote. The voter has been cast, represent his interest that has been cast, and the result turned out to be the one that he prepared at the end of the day. And I think so far as a country, we have come a long way and we have done very well. So I reckon, that, I reckon that you agree with uh, Dr. Afarijan that uh, we cannot, as a country or election management bodies, be over-reliant on technology. The same technology, people have argued, is better for election outcomes in this country? Oh, I completely agree with him that we cannot wholly rely on it. And as I mentioned in the afternoon to you, a country like U.S. that have so much technology to deploy when it comes to election, in 2000, you saw what happened at Florida. So in the same way as a country, we must also be guided against over-reliance on that because, as indicated earlier on, you cannot call somebody to come and cast the vote again because you are not sure where the vote that he, can, he had cast went or gone. So certainly we have to be very cautious, tread cautiously, to ensure that um, we use technology very well. There must always be the manual backup. In the event that the technology feels that we are able to pull on that. And I think that is so far what we've been doing. Because if it comes to verification, part of the technological means of verifying, there's also manual means of verifying as well. So I think we have to go along those lines. Right.
But, but some political actors, political parties, have argued that we need to make a transition as a country. We need to make a transition from the current uh, manual way of voting. I mean, people are verified with uh, biometric voters register, but eventually you need a paper to stick your thumb on it in order to make a, uh, an electoral decision. But some have argued that because of the presence of these human interfaces and uh, physical paper interfaces, it breeds the kind of situation where we get political vigilantes thinking that they could police the election outcomes, which has always uh, been the reason why political actors are arguing that we possibly should be moving towards a full uh, electronic voting system. You touch a screen, you have voted. You don't think we are ready for that yet? I personally don't think that as a country we are ready for electronic voting. I'm sure it will come in due course. But for now, the system we have, it is not perfect, but I think it is very good system that we have for now. So I would propose that we hold on for a while to get to electronic voting. And if electronic voting is not a process where you can, some people should vote electronically and some people should vote manually. If we are going electronic voting, all of us as a country should go electronic voting. And you know very well that there are some villages in this country where there's no electricity. You know that there are some villages that it's a, it's a privilege to have life within a certain hours. So I propose that we hold on to the current system for some time, and beyond that, we can go for electronic votes. It will come on its own. And as we all know now, um, mobile money system has become part and parcel of us. But 10 years ago, when we talk of mobile money, people will what are you dreaming about? So I'm sure we'll get there as a country. Yeah, you're not ready yet. I know that uh, there, there are also concerns uh, that as we move towards the 2020 elections, we need to, I mean, when I say we as a country and Ghana's uh, electoral management body, we need to chart a new direction to make the election outcomes more reliable, more dependable, more transparent. For which reason the Electoral Commission is thinking about uh, introducing uh, more technology into the 2020 elections. You will recommend against that, right? Yeah, if we are having a technology that can improve the processes, for instance, you remember in the 2012 election, the big slogan, no verification, no vote, and some people were having difficulties getting verified. So if they can have a better technology that can help us be verified as quick as possible beyond our fingers, I think it would be a very good idea. All in the process of ensuring that the person casting the vote is quasi mensal and we want to ensure that he's quasi mensal. And I think that is very, very important. But using it for other means of electronic voting, I don't think we are quite there yet. But if they can have a technology that can help us to improve the efficiency of the current system, I think it's better. So let's look at the, the issue of the strong room system. I mean, over the years, our elections have uh, revolved around the machinations that surround the strong room system. I mean, there are so uh, many myths surrounding uh, inputting and outputting at uh, strong rooms, and these have in many instances, created tensions. Uh, moving on, how do you think we should be dealing with this simple uh, aspect of uh, the strong room system in uh, compiling and declaration of election results in 2020? I think that uh, over the years, and we want to give uh, our own, that we can yet have to give credit to the media. I think for now, you have demystified the strong room because when the elections are held in the respective constituencies, you, the media, you, you don't announce the results, but you call the elections. And I think uh, before the results get to Accra here, we will we, we hear from all the media outlets, including TV3, that, uh, for instance, the Chimayanov constituency, NDC had this, NTP had that, CPP had that. So I think that has contributed significantly in intensifying the strong rule. So when the results get to strong rule, everybody knows the results already, so you cannot. If you want temper or manipulate the results, have going to be a strong one. So you only have to tell it up. So I think uh, the, that strong system has been significant enough. Therefore, right. even if they are there to add up or not to add up, people will already do the results. And they are even doing their own national tallying already. So uh, I think going forward, I think the technology has also helped us a lot to do that as well. Right, Dr. Ozu Mensah, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Ozu Mensah is a senior lecturer at the Department of Political Science at the University of Ghana. I'm Stephen Antti. This is still News at 10, live from the News Hub at Addis Awe, Kandai and Kraik.